Up to this point, we've simply been dragging and dropping controls from our toolbox onto our designer surface. In the previous lesson, I explained how code is being written with each action that we take, whether on the design surface or in the properties window. So in this video, I want to start looking at the code that's actually being generated. It's code called XAML. And then we're going to look at the XAML code that's automatically included whenever you create a new project or we add a new XAML page to our application within Visual Studio. So XAML is a programming language, much like C Sharp is a programming language. Granted, they look a lot different, but XAML is created in such a way that it's focused on defining the design or the layout for our Silverlight applications. It's characterized by a series of opening and closing tags, as you can see. You might quickly see that this resembles HTML, and that was by design. There are two reasons why Microsoft chose to do this. First of all, most designers are more comfortable with the tag-like syntax to define a user interface, uh, since that's what we've all been doing for the last 15 or 20 years or so with uh, the web. Uh, secondly, a tag-like syntax makes it easier for a tool to automatically generate a code required to define the interface by using a WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get style interface uh, like we've done up to this point using the toolbox on the designer surface. While it's entirely possible to create a Silverlight application using no XAML whatsoever, uh, you can just use C Sharp like I did previously in, a, in an earlier video. Uh, almost nobody that I know does this, except perhaps in a very limited capacity when you might need to respond to a user's actions and then dynamically add or remove a control to the application. Again, that's probably not something that you're going to do very often. The key idea here is that XAML is what you will want to use to build the interface for your Silverlight Windows Phone 7 applications. I'm going to assume that you have some exposure to HTML or XML and that you understand the basic concepts of how a document like this is structured. In other words, how there's a beginning tag as well as an ending tag, how tags can contain other tags or are parents to child tags, uh, or elements is another phrase that's used often with uh, XML, how tags can define attributes that can contain other information like we see here uh, with a attribute name and a value uh, delimited by the equal sign. If you understand that much, then the rest is simply a matter of learning the Silverlight specific tags. By the way, XAML is not exclusive to Silverlight or even not even exclusive to defining user interfaces. It can be used in other products as well, so it's a valuable exercise to learn more about XAML. One quick note, uh, while you certainly can take your existing HTML or XML knowledge and apply 95% of it to, to Silverlight, there are some small nuances and features of XAML that are unique to XAML. Uh, and we're going to cover those in a little while, but they're not really all that difficult. Just something to keep in mind. It's not, it's not completely equal. All right, so if you're a designer and you're building a user interface for a Silverlight application, you might want to choose a different tool instead of Visual Studio to help you design the user interface. Most designers would choose Expression Blend for Windows Phone 7 instead of using Visual Studio 2010 Express for Windows Phone. Uh, it contains additional XAML generating tools that are more focused on the user interface and the user experience than Visual Studio 2010 Express. This creates a nice separation of the work that the designer does with the work that the developer will do. And I want to stress that it's possible to use either tool to do the majority of your work. It's not entirely possible to use Visual Studio to design a user interface, much like how we're doing here. It's just that there's some additional tools and, and functionality that allows you to generate um, uh, XAML a little bit more uh, easily using Expression Blend for Windows Phone 7. There's an expression in software development called fighting the tools. Fighting the tools. And while it's possible to write C-sharp code in Expression Blend, you're going to find that using Visual Studio 2010 Express for Windows Phone 7 is a more pleasurable experience and you won't be fighting the tool to write your C-sharp code. And the same is true for writing XAML within Visual Studio. You'll find that beyond the basics like we're doing here, it might be easier to accomplish what you want 
using expression blend. Okay, so with all that in mind, let's take a look at the project. I've already created uh, a project called XAML Basics. I've done no work up to this point, and really we're not going to create any uh, real application here. I just want to use it as a way of illustrating how XAML works within Visual Studio. So I can go to my toolbox and drag and drop a button like we did in the previous lesson. And when I do that, we notice that it generates the button declaration here, it creates a new instance of the button class, if you will, uh, in our uh, in our code area. In fact, what I'm going to do is just double click the XAML code button here so I can get it full screen. And I want to look at what an empty XAML document looks like before we start adding any more controls than the button control. Uh, first at the very top, we'll see the phone colon phone application page. Now if you recall, we've already used this document outline a couple of times to select the phone application page. And I made the point at that time saying that it is the topmost level within uh, within our XAML page. And we can see it defined here as the beginning tag. And if we were to scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see that here is the ending tag. So everything else will be contained within this phone application page. Uh, and you might wonder what this phone colon is. Well, if you recall our earlier discussion on namespaces, we described that a, a namespace is a last name for our classes. And in this case, uh, the phone application page uh, belongs to a namespace that's been aliased by this phone. So if we look down here a little bit later, it'll define where this namespace, what this namespace shortcut really is. So XML namespace NS colon phone is really from the CLR namespace Microsoft.phone.controls and is contained within a file an assembly called Microsoft.phone.dll. All right. So again, whenever we see these little words with a colon. They're defining namespaces, and these namespaces are similar to the namespaces that are defined with a using statement. And they're just aliased using either X or phone or shell or D or MC and so on throughout the remainder of our XAML document. It's as easy as that. Again, just keep in mind that XAML is a programming language just like C Sharp. It has some equivalents. It may look a lot different, but it can do some of the same types of things. Namespaces is one of those things. All right, so moving down from there, if we scroll down just a little bit beyond some of these attributes, uh, we'll come back to font family, font size, foreground, uh, supported orientations, and things of that nature. If you take a look here, uh, we see a code comment similar to how you would create comment comments in HTML or XML with that open bracket, exclamation mark, dash, dash, and then we can you use the, uh, the dash, dash, close bracket, to finish your code comment. At any rate, it says that this is the layout route. It's the root grid where all the con page content is being placed. Okay, so that's interesting. We have uh, a layout control called a grid. In another video later today, we're going to look at the various layout controls that are available within Silverlight to Windows Phone 7 applications. And we're going to talk about grid controls in a separate video, but it's a lot like an HTML table. Most people are familiar with the technique. It's now frowned upon of using an HTML table to lay out the text and the controls on a web page. But it's the same idea here with a little twist. Here you define the rows, uh, and take a look here. Here we're defining two rows. And then we would also use a similar type of syntax to define the columns. You define those all up front at once. Uh, then any additional controls that are added to the grid control, such as the stack panel, as you can see here, they have to say what row they belong to. So we have grid.row equals zero. And if you look below that, we have a grid. And it belongs to grid.row equals one. And again, we'll look at the grid a little bit more detail in a subsequent video, but you can see how each of these will associate themselves with a row defined in this grid.row definition section here at the top. So as we already have seen, inside of this grid called layout root, you can see here it is uh, the ending portion of that grid, there is a stack panel and another grid. A stack panel is another layout control. 
uh, that we'll talk about in another video. Uh, using grids and panels is the main technique for positioning controls and text on a Windows Phone 7 Silverlight application. Now this particular stack panel contains the application name and the page name in text blocks. So if we can open this back up, we've seen these and even changed them in the, the exercise from day one, but they are contained in a grid, or I'm sorry, in a stack panel at the very top of our application, and this is where it's defined. Also, I just want to say that nothing prevents us from removing these if we want more screen real estate. Uh, they do take up quite a bit of room on our screen, and it might be nice to remove them uh, if we need some more space. We might do this in some of the later examples. We'll go ahead and leave it in there for now. The application name is self-explanatory, but what is a page name? Well, up to this point, all of our Silverlight applications have consisted of a single page, or in other words, a single XAML file. However, we can add new XAML files to our project and then navigate to them from the main page in our Silverlight application. And the process is remarkably similar to navigating using HTML. We're gonna cover that in day three, so let's just table that discussion for a moment. And let's move on. All right, so back to the layout route. It has a stack panel, but it also contains a grid called content panel. And this content panel is typically where the body of your application lives. And by body, I mean the controls that comprise the main functionality for that given page. And so this is where we're going to add the majority of our code in the next video as we rewrite one of yesterday's applications by hand in the XAML code editor instead of using the toolbox and the XAML designer. And then below that, you can see there's a big commented out section. Uh, and it starts with this tag phone application page dot application bar. Uh, I'll devote an entire video to the application bar on day three. However, for, for now, just think of it as a menu that can pop up to allow your user with, give your user more options without taking up too much space on the screen until it's needed. Do you recall back on day one when we took a tour of the, uh, the phone seven emulator and we looked at an app bar? That's where uh, we have a sample app bar created for us and we can modify this code to you know use our own icons and our own menu items uh, inside of it but it gives us a nice little template for for adding an app bar uh, with this commented out section of code here all right one last important piece of information we already worked with the main page dot xaml dot cs file uh, many times and I explained uh, as we were working with it initially that uh, the .cs file is the code behind file and I explained that the two files are linked together even the solution explorer represents them kind of in a hierarchical relationship what I didn't tell you is that the c-sharp file and the XAML page itself are two parts of a whole in other words the work that we do in the XAML file and the work that we do in the C-sharp file uh, are compiled. They're built by the compiler into a single class that defines both the appearance and the behavior of the main page in our application. I can't get too deep into a discussion of what a class is. We've already talked about that, and I can't talk too much about what it, the word partial means, but just think about this whenever you see the word partial. That means that part of the class is defined here, and then the other part of the class is defined here. So when we think of a class, traditionally we were thinking in terms of the car class, but there are more, way, more than one way to define a class. Here we're defining a new class uh, called main page. There are two files that go into making that class. I know that's a little bit of a mind bender. Don't worry about it too much. Just understand that what goes on in both files are two parts of, of a larger piece of a class called main page. Okay, so I think that's enough information, and so now I think we can start diving deeper into a number of different topics related to Silverlight and XAML. The rest of the information will trickle in as we dive deeper into topics like how Silverlight applications are laid out, how we've been laying out controls uh, in our user interface, uh, or in other words, the approach that we use to arrange controls and text in a Silverlight application. We'll also look at some of the simple controls that are uh, available to you as you build your applications. We've stayed with a limited set so far, but we're going to expand that and talk about virtually every control in the toolbox before it's all said and done. Uh, and 
we're also going to talk about how to navigate between pages uh, using XAML. And yes, as I said already, it's a lot like HTML, but there are some uh, some differences, and we want to to fully understand this as we talk about navigating between pages. All right. So with that said, I'll leave you to the next lesson. Good luck. You're doing great. Hang in there. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.